So this should look familiar. We are looking at the demand and cost curves for a firm in a perfectly competitive market. So this horizontal line here at 5.71 is, uh, is a firm's uh, demand curve. It's also the average revenue curve and the marginal revenue curve. As we've discussed earlier, this firm is a price taker, which means that it can sell as much as it wants as long as it sells at the market price of 5.71. This curve over here is the marginal cost curve and uh, marginal cost means th uh, this curve is telling us what's the cost of produ producing one additional unit. As we've discussed before, profit is maximized when marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So the appropriate quantity to produce is this amount QC which is the quantity that corresponds to point A where the marginal cost curve and the marginal revenue curve intersect. So if that represents the price and the quantity, what is the cost at this quantity? That cost is based on point B, which is a point on the average total cost curve. So with this quantity, the cost per item is given by this number. The revenue is given by this number. So the total profit would be given by this rectangle. So it's the profit per item multiplied by the number of items. So this shaded area then becomes the profit. So in this example, we do have an economic profit because the cost is less than the revenue per item. What will happen in the long run? If uh, economic profit is to be made, then more firms will enter the market. If more firms enter the market, the price will fall because as we've discussed earlier, if you look at the simple supply and demand for the market, so this is our supply curve, this is our uh, demand curve, and that's the equilibrium price. If more firms enter the market, the supply curve will shift to the right and the price will fall. So when the price falls, our marginal revenue curve will come down. So in the long run, the marginal revenue curve will come down to a point such that there are no more economic profits. So effectively, what will happen in the long run is that economic profit will be zero. Now let's talk about monopolistic competition. First, the basic characteristics. I will read this for you and you simply need to memorize these five points. With monopolistic competition, there are a large number of potential buyers and sellers. The products offered by each seller are close substitutes for the products offered by other firms and each firm tries to make its product look different. Entry into and exit from the market are possible with fairly low costs. Firms have some pricing power. Suppliers differentiate their products through advertising and other non-price strategies. Now, my favorite example of uh, monopolistic competition is the toothpaste industry. So if you have that in mind, it will be easy to remember these basic characteristics. Let's look at the demand analysis for uh, perfect uh, for monopolistic competition. And then we'll also get a sense for the optimal price and output. In uh, monopolistic competition, firms face a downward sloping demand curve because Obviously, if the price is set too high, nobody will buy your toothpaste. As you try to reduce your price or as you reduce your price, the demand goes up. So that's a downward sloping demand curve. The marginal revenue curve is going to be steeper than the demand curve. And we have discussed this shape of the marginal revenue curve at uh, other points in this lecture. But for now, let's just take it as a given that the marginal revenue curve will be steeper than the, than the demand curve, but the y-axis intercept is the same. Now, 
so that's our basic uh, demand now let's say we are looking at our marginal cost and average cost curves so this is our marginal cost curve and above we have our average cost curve the profit maximizing quantity is always marginal cost equals marginal revenue so the logical quantity to produce for this firm is q1 which is the point where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue but the price that will be charged will be based on the market and uh, it will be based on the demand curve so the price that is charged is this point we can call this point x so we read off the price the price here is p1 so you should get used to this by now the price that is charged is always based on the demand curve in the case of uh, perfect competition the demand curve was flat so that was a little easier to read but here again it's not too difficult just go up to the demand curve and that's your price now what is the profit so at quantity q1 if the price is p1 we need to determine our cost to determine the cost we look at the average cost curve which is right here and at q1 the cost is c1 therefore the profit will be this region over here because we have our quantity q the price per unit is p1 cost per unit is c1 and hence the total profit is this multiplied by the quantity which gives us the region of this rectangle so that helps us figure out the optimal price and the optimal output in the long run so what's the long run equilibrium in the long run high economic profit will encourage more firms to enter and each firm's demand curve will fall the idea being that let's say that at a given point in time in a given city toothpaste business is very profitable such as what you see right here if economic profits are made we've already talked about the fact that in this industry it is easier for other firms to come in if other firms come into the industry then the demand curve that is faced by each individual firm is going to come down if the demand curve comes down then look at what happens let's say eventually the demand curve moves through this point so then the price that is charged is equal to the cost and hence eventually economic profits will come down to zero now let's talk about oligopoly again the basic characteristics first in a oligopoly we have a small number of potential sellers the products are close substitutes they could be differentiated uh, homogenous unbranded they are generally high barriers to entry which is why we have a small number of potential sellers and in uh, oligopoly each firm has substantial pricing power when we talk about the demand analysis and talk about pricing strategies there are three basic strategies that we need to talk about one is uh, pricing independence the kurno assumption and the nash equilibrium so the next few slides will get into the details of these three items in the context of the first item we need to understand the kinked demand curve so this is one model of a uh, which 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 tries to explain why prices in a in a oligopoly tend to be relatively stable and from an exam perspective it's important to understand this kinked demand curve model so since we are talking about a demand curve we have price on the y axis quantity on the x axis and the kink simply means that there is a certain point on the demand curve and to the left of that point we have a somewhat elastic demand to the right we have a less elastic demand curve why does this happen let's understand this through a simple example let's say that we have a market where two major players exist in the cola market so there is coca cola and pepsi cola now let's talk about 1 liter bottles that both these companies sell let's say that we are at a given point in time where the price for a 1 liter bottle is 100 rupees so both coke and pepsi are selling their 1 liter bottles for 
a um, hundred rupees what happens to the lift so let's say coke decides to increase prices by five rupees so coke decides to increase the price to 105 the assumption is that when one player in the in this market increases price the other does not follow the increase in price so if only coke raises the price the demand for coke will fall a lot because consumers will then just buy more pepsi so re increase in price high fall in quantity and that implies a elastic demand curve what if coke reduces price by 5 rupees down to say 95 then the assumption is to the right of this kink point the other competitor will also follow the actions of coke so if pepsi also then decreases price by 5 both companies have reduced price so demand for coke in this context will go up so the demand increases but not by as much not by much because pepsi has also decreased price so that explains the relatively less elastic nature of the demand curve to the right of the kink now the marginal revenue curve as always is steeper than the demand curve and is downward sloping there is a discontinuity here because of the kink in the demand curve and we don't have time to go over this right now but what i'd encourage you to do is simply play with some numbers and you can simply uh, say that the price is 100 if you take the price down to 95 uh, price down to 95 price down to 100 uh, price up to 105 and calculate the marginal revenues you will notice that there is a discontinuity in the marginal revenue curves what you can also do is go back and listen to my 2011 lectures on um, on this topic and there I've explained this in detail but from an exam perspective I don't think it's overly important to understand why as long as you know the fact that there is a discontinuity in the marginal revenue curve the marginal cost curve as long as it passes through any of these points will um, the profit maximizing quantity as always is the point where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost so that will be this quantity in the example shown here as you've noticed this model helps explain why prices tend to be relatively stable in uh, oligopoly but this model does not tell us what that price should be so that's a limitation of this model if you found this clip interesting and informative, please visit my website www.rfirfanullah.com. Here you will find a tremendous amount of useful material. Right here in the 2011 CFA video lecture series, you will find the entire level 1 curriculum for free. And most of the material here is still relevant. So this is worth looking at. The 2012 video lecture series covers both level 1 and level 2. These lectures are available for a fee. And uh, finally, down here, uh, financial management at IBA. Here you will find my lectures at IBA uh, for a course on financial management. Plus you'll find lots of useful spreadsheets that can help you with financial modeling. So again, please visit www.rfirfanullah.com. Thank you.